My name is Brian Kwong, also known as the Salesforce Wizard due to my choice of head apparel during Salesforce events. This series assumes you're familiar with the concepts reviewed in the previous videos, so if you have not seen them, please go check out the Wizard Apprentice playlist to get caught up. In this episode, we're going to build our very first flow. But what should we build? A loud noise wakes you up. The lights go out. You look outside and see loose wires and fallen tree branches. If you call for help, turn to page 44. If you go back to bed and forget anything's happened, page 79. If you move the wires, page 35. Well, obviously, you gotta move the wires out of the way. <clears throat> you grab the cut wires. Electricity flows through them, and now you. As you drift into unconsciousness, you wish you had never gotten out of bed. You know, when I was a young boy, I loved these choose-your-own-adventure books. You know, you never read them straight through. You would read to a certain point, get asked a question, and then you decided by going to a different page. Yeah, I would often cheat and go back when I died or something terrible happened. That was kind of part of the fun. But what's really great about these choose-your-own-adventures is they're never-ending. You can make them as long or as short as you want it. So if you think about this... Choose Your Own Adventure book is nothing more than a series of screens with decisions. Does that sound familiar? I think that's something we could do with Flo. Let's start, shall we? And so it begins. So before we start off, we're going to go say, well, what type of flow we're going to pick? Since we know there's going to be screens involved, it's obviously a screen flow. So from this point on, I'm going to do things a little bit cheaty. I'm going to show you what the components are and how to put them together, but I'm not going to fully flush everything out. That's really going to be up to you because it's your adventure that you want people to choose from. So I'm going to start with a screen that will simply have some instructions to it and uh, an output text or display text, excuse me. This will be my welcome message. So I'm going to say, welcome to choose your own adventure. Click next to start the adventure. All right. And we know this is going to be our first screen because obviously it's our welcome screen. And we're going to go next to another screen. And this is where we start our adventure. So the adventure begins. For this particular thing, when you think of a choose the adventure, there's usually a series of texts followed by a question and a series of options. So all our screens are going to look pretty similar when we're in this stage. And that's going to be a display text to give us the text of what's going on, what room we are in, or whatever the scenario is, as well as the questions that we're going to ask. And then we're going to have some way for them to make a decision. And we could do that a couple different ways. We can use check boxes. We could do a pick list. Uh, we could do a slider. It really is kind of up to you. You can also mix and match. You don't have to use one for the entire thing. I'm going to use radio buttons just because I like the look and feel of them. So this is our template for basically the choose your next direction part of our adventure. So we're going to just say our adventure message one, because I'm it doesn't show up. So we can do whatever we want here. And now this is where your creativity needs to come in play. You need to go through and say, well, what do you want to describe in this room? I'm going to be really simple because we're breaking on time. The room is dark and dreary. There are four doors. That's it doesn't have to be very complex. Now my radio buttons is going to be basically the question, which door do you choose? Since we're using our radio buttons here, we can create um, our own choices. This is an another decision you need to make in the fact that you can either create something unique for every screen that you're going to ask the user to choose, 
or you can use the same set. I'm going to use the same set for expediency purposes. So in this particular situation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a choice and I'm going to have a choice that's simply a cardinal direction. So it's going to be choice B North. The data type is going to be a text and North will be my choice value. And then I'm going to rinse and repeat that to create my other cardinal directions, which I'll do right now. All right, there we go. We have our simple question, our little display text. We have four options to choose from. The reason I'm gonna go with North, South, East, and West, like I said, is I wanna reuse these. I don't wanna to have to create a new choice every single time I'm on a different screen. It's an option if you wanna do that. It will take you longer to build your flow because you're gonna have a lot of different choices then to select from. But we're gonna go with something very simple. So now we're gonna attach our screen. Oops. Our instruction screen to the adventure begins screen. The next element we need is decision. We need to, to evaluate what did the person select to decide where did we want him to go. So our decision is going to be labeled something sensible. And in my case, I'm assuming I'm gonna have lots of different decisions. So I'm gonna just call this pathway one D for decision. And now we have our labels. Our labels need to mirror the number of paths that we're going to have. So if you want to have them go to a separate place for the four different choices we just created, then we need to have four outcomes, three ones that we custom, one that's default. If you are going to only have them go to two different places, then you only need two outcomes, right? So I'm going to go with four different outcomes, one for each item. But when I choose this, because these outcomes need to be unique within the flow, and I'm going to be reusing the same choices, I'm going to label them slightly differently. So instead of just saying Northwest East, I'm going to have North Path 1, North Path 2, North Path 3, North Path 4. So that way, when I go and say, hey, which, what decision is being set for this first decision element, I know that I'm not gonna accidentally duplicate this anywhere else. So here's my outcome, very simple. We're gonna take a look at the screen resource of what door do you choose and ask the uh, check to see if it's north. And now I'm gonna repeat this for two of the other cardinal directions because the fourth one is gonna be our default direction. Here we go. There's our decision. Let's attach it. And now for the outcome, where do they go? So I'm, we're, we're going to have four screens here. The, the only reason why you, you might want to do less is if you want to really put this together and not have a very complicated um, time figuring out what you want to put into these various screens. I'm going to go ahead and put something really, really simple in for the results and then we will go through and see how that looks. So here we go. So we have our four different screens. I label them to mirror up with the very instructions I'm going to have to go. And I like to do this because it makes it really easy to figure out where do I need to go. So let's connect our decision. We're going to start with the very first item. And I know I'm going to North Path. So I'm going to select North Path 1. Let's go to the, go to the next one. This time it's going to be West Path. And then East Path. And then South Paths. Northwest. I made a mistake, didn't I? I did make a mistake. 
we must fix that. Ah, oh, that is so much better. Okay. So in my particular scenario, I'm going to have it. So if you pick North, East or West, everything is fine. But if you go to the East path, the game is over. So I'm going to create a screen here for game over. And we'll connect it there. And now we can do the next step for we're going to ask a series of questions. We could have asked the questions in each of these different screens if we wanted to. Uh, that would be a really nice choice if when you are bifurcating or separating the different paths here, you continue to go down to a different path. I didn't do this because sometimes you're going to want to have a different description, but you actually are going to merge things together. So for example, uh, we have West and self together where you know things are just fine so we're going to go through and put something else in here for display text and our radio buttons and for our display text it's going to be path to message a because i'm going to have two different options And now our radio buttons is going to be which direction do you go? And here I'm going to actually call this path um, 2A so I know exactly which screen this is later. And our choices are easy. We're just going to go ahead and select the choices that we want. And I'm just going to do east and west. What did I forget to do? East, West. Oh, I forgot to give the screen a name. So this is path to A. I'm going to go ahead and copy. We'll call this to path to B. I'm going to have the exact same question, but I'm going to change my API name so I can find this easier. And now I'm going to just change my choices to be different and then connect so i'll say hey if you go west i'm going to go here if you go south i'm going to go back here and then we'll move these over so things look a little bit prettier and now we're going to have our decision again so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually copy my decision And I'm going to copy it one more time. I'll connect these two together. And now I just need to modify my decision. Because my choice values are the same, my outcomes can be the same. And I'm going to actually use things to make this a little bit more easier for me. So uh, everything is going to be identical except for the fact that um, I'm only going to have east and west here. So I'm going to delete the outcome. I'm going to make this one to be east. Delete the outcome. So I should only have a west and east paths, which I believe mirrors up with what I have here. So this means this needs to be north and south. So I'm going to keep the south. And I'm going to delete west and east. So now I have south. This is 2B. 2B. To be. And now I need to just say, well, which one am I selecting? So this is coming from 2B, so there's the answer here. And I need to set the same thing over here. To be path 2A. There we go. So we've splitted our options into four. We had our final screen. We asked them, hey, which direction you want to go? And we only give them two options in this particular scenario. And we essentially rinse and repeat. We go ahead and add screens for our outcomes, uh, potentially add more uh, decisions going down as far as you want to do. 
we're going to go ahead and save this. And we're going to put a description. Screens, root choice, root choices, and decisions. Everything looks good. So we're going to go ahead and save this. What does this look like? Well, we could go ahead and hook this up into Salesforce and you may call it from a button, URL, whatever the case may be, but we're going to go ahead and use the debug. I like this too, especially for flows like this, where we're not having to worry about actual data being created or edited. When you run the debug, if you have data to be created or being edited or deleted within your flow, when the flow runs in debug, it's actually running the flow. So you need to be careful that you don't accidentally delete things or update things or create records that you don't want. Another good reason to be doing this in a sandbox or a developer org and not your production environment. So we'll click debug, it'll open up a new screen. We get some options. I always leave these set to default because I always want to run the latest versions and I want to see what the details are because that's how you need a bug. We'll go ahead and click run. Now there's a step here that if we had resources that we could pass values in, we can actually define what those resources are. The exception to that is anything that is a record variable resource that we can't define, but we can do IDs and text, numbers, dates, all those wonderful things. So here we are. Choose your own adventure. It begins. Welcome. Click next to start. We'll click next. We go down. Which room do you choose? We'll go ahead and pick north. Click next. Hey, you went north. That's a code of room. The sky is unseen. We click next. Here's another direction so I can pick south. It goes to the decision. And because I don't have anything after the decision, the flow ends. Let's run that again. This time I'll pick east. Hey, look, a giant wall is in your way. You have nowhere to go. Oh, uh, I lost. But there's a problem here. And that problem is the fact that I could just click the previous button and go back to a previous answer and move forward. So if this was a real choose your own adventure where you don't want people to go, oh, that was a mistake. Let me go and choose a different option. We need to remove the previous button from our screens. So that was a very helpful thing to know about. So let's go and into our screens, go into our control navigations and simply remove the previous. I'm going to go and do that for all the screens to make sure that no matter where the user ends up, they can't go through and say, ah, I'm just going to backtrack a couple steps and start from there. I actually want them to have to start all over again. And we'll go and click the last screen. I'm going to save it and then we'll enter debug one more time and we'll just take a look to confirm that our previous buttons are gone. Looks good here. I'll go back to click East. No previous, no previous. Oh, I'm stuck. All I can do is finish. Huzzah. There's your very first flow. Yes, it doesn't really do anything. We're not creating data. We're not updating data. We're not even grabbing records because those are things that we are going to look at in future episodes. This puts together everything that we've talked about so far to create your very first simple flow, and you can have some fun with it. I'm actually going to be building off this concept as we move on to talk about the other things that we can do in flow. So next versions, you may see us actually doing things to keep track of who's playing your choose your adventure game, how far are they getting, uh, and wonderful things like that. But those are for another episode. What type of adventure did you build? Go ahead and tell me in the comments. I'd love to know. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to get a cool shirt like this, you can go to thewizardnews.com slash shop, and you'll find shirts like this as well as stickers, coffee mugs, notepads, and even pillows. You can also support us by shopping through our Amazon affiliate link, which you'll find in the description, as well as to the wizardnews.com under the support me menu. To get more videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon to get the notifications of all the future videos. Remember, the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.